This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. And my special guest today is John Sales, the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank, who's going to be tell us about some of the group's activities, particularly during this holiday season, and most importantly, how you can participate in helping the Vermont Food Bank on its urgent mission uh, to fight hunger and food insecurity and, and all those issues uh, that face uh, many uh, fellow Vermonters. So John, welcome to Positive Vermont. And uh, first of all, would you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure, Dennis. First, thanks for having me on again. Um, always a pleasure to talk to you and your viewers. A little bit about me. Wow, I've, been, uh, I've lived in Vermont since 1999. I moved here uh, and work for the public service department, usually doing utility regulation, um, first in telecommunications, and then just generally uh, moved on after about six years to the Agency of Natural Resources. I uh, was there for about four years and was the deputy secretary when I came to the Vermont Food Bank in 2009. And uh, I've been at the food bank for 13 years now. That's kind of hard to believe. Um, it's been it's been a, a constant time of, of change and growth and impact. And uh, we don't have time to look back right now, but, but boy, a lot has changed since then. Imagine. Well, tell us a little bit about the Vermont Food Bank, uh, a bit about its history and its scope and, uh, and uh, give us some background. And then I'm gonna ask about how it functions, but give us a little background on the food bank. Sure. The Vermont Food Bank has been around since 1986. It was actually created in central Vermont um, by uh, Central Vermont Community Action and some other local groups, the Friends Service Group and some others. Um, it was the local food shelves and meal sites who are all, a lot of them still around today, uh, were just having trouble sourcing enough food. And so they got together and started this organization called the Food Bank to be a central hub. And we still are the only food bank in Vermont. Uh, and we work, work with about 300 partners all across the state. And those are your, your local food shelf, you know, whether that's the Colche in Colchester or the South Burlington food shelf, Feeding Chittenden, um, uh, Cider in Grand Isle. I mean, they're just in every community in the state. Um, you know, soup kitchens, senior centers, after school programs, really any kind of nonprofit organization that's, that's helping to feed people who who have trouble affording enough food for themselves um, are partners with the Vermont Food Bank. That includes schools and hospitals across the state too, where we do our veggie van go mobile distributions, uh, mostly of fresh food, fresh produce, meat and dairy. So it operates through local food banks. And how is that uh, done? Do you have a central warehouse and do you have a distribution? Or give us a little uh, idea of the, the scope of how this operates. Yeah, as I said, we're a statewide organization and the, the food bank, you know, we distributed, well, prior to COVID, um, it was 11 or 12 million pounds of food a month. So we're a medium-sized food distribution company. We have distribution centers in, in Barrie, in Rutland, and in Brattleboro. And from those three uh, places serve the whole state. Um, in COVID, the 2020, the first year of COVID, uh, we distributed close to 20 million pounds of food. So it was quite an increase, almost double. Um, and this year uh, or last year, 2021, which is almost almost over now, uh, we distributed about uh, 17 and a half million pounds of food. So it's down a little bit, um, but still significantly more than it was prior to COVID. So we have a fleet of trucks and drivers and folks working in the warehouses uh, we source food from uh, from the local businesses and farms. We do gleaning. We purchase food from local farmers. Uh, we also get a lot of food from the federal government through federal programs, which are then distributed out in communities. Um, and then just donations from um, both local, regional, and national organizations. Um, you know, all the supermarkets uh, donate to the food bank. Um, and we get donations from national manufacturers through our, uh, our um, relationship with Feeding America, which is a national organization of about 200 food banks across the country. 
That's great, John. Could you give us an idea? There's a term that uh, we discussed last year, and that's uh, called food insecurity. Uh, could you tell that what that means and how does it relate to Vermont? Yeah, you know, food insecurity and hunger are, are kind of the same thing. Food insecurity is more of a technical term used by the, the federal government. And it, what it means is that people don't have enough money to purchase the food that they and their family need to live an active and healthy lifestyle. Um, so if you're um, buying food that's not as nourishing as you would want because you can't afford fresh, healthy food, um, if you're buying less food than you and your family really need and skipping meals, if you're, um, you know, periodically run out of money for food, you know, every month or every couple of months because something happens in your life, then you could be categorized as, as food insecure. Um, you know, hunger is really, it's a physical sensation, but it's also a situation that a lot of people find themselves in, um, you know, through no fault of their own. They're working hard, they're doing the things that they need to do. And just in the way our system is set up, find themselves without enough money to purchase the food they need. Could you give us an idea also of the, the idea of nutrition? Just, just not yeah. food itself, but how does that play into the well-being of individuals and, and groups and people around the state? I don't know if you get involved in nutrition education, but could you discuss that aspect a little? Yeah, we actually do get involved in nutrition education. Um, we have a, a program, an initiative called VT Fresh, you know, which we work with food shelves and meal sites around the state and kind of transform the, well, this was pre-COVID when people would walk into a food shelf, but, but kind of transform the experience into one where there's fresh fruits and vegetables available and, and lean meats and dairy. Um, and it feels more like a, a grocery store experience. And also, you know, recipes. We actually, right now, if you go to our website, you can find uh, kind of a VT Fresh Challenge where if you try out some of the recipes, you can get entered in a, a drawing to win a $100 gift card. Um, so, so that's for folks who are, are interested in trying some recipes. They're all vegetable-based. So, you know, carrots, beets, parsnips, kale, all kinds of, of good, healthy foods. Really, a lot of it grown in Vermont that we distribute. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's so clear that the kinds of foods we eat um, determine a lot about our lives and our health and how much health care we need. And particularly for children, you know, the research is crystal clear that without proper nutrition, kids don't develop mentally and emotionally um, in ways that allows them to to learn, to play, and to you know really fulfill their potential as as human beings. So at the food bank, um, you know we get a lot of donated food and we distribute that. But when we're sourcing food, when we're purchasing food, when we're talking to donors about the foods we want, we're looking for um, local. We're looking for fresh. We're looking for nutrient dense. Uh, you know it it really is uh, your goods. It's fresh produce, oftentimes from a Vermont farm. It's, it's dairy, it's eggs, it's meat. Um, it's the kinds of foods that people tell us they want. Uh, you know, we ask, uh, we ask people who go to food shelves, what kinds of foods you want? And the first thing we hear is fresh fruits and vegetables. It's what people want. Then it's uh, dairy, it's, then it's um, whole grain breads and pastas. So people crave good nourishing food and we wanna make sure that that's on the shelf. That's great. Now, uh, last time we spoke was in July of 2020, and we've been all through this pandemic. Uh, maybe you can tell our viewers what life has been like in the last uh, period and, and how the food shelf has been coping with it, because some of the sources have not been there. Uh, closure of certain meeting places and things like that. So give us an idea of what its life has been like in the last uh, few months, a year, actually. Yeah, I mean, since since July 2020, you know, in March of 2020, of course, the, the whole world got flipped up on its head, um, and the food bank had to had to really reinvent the way we were working overnight. Uh, so it was not safe for people to go into food shelves um, and shop for food. It was not safe for us to have our our veggie van goes set up like a farmer's market where people were walking through these beautiful tents and choosing the vegetables they wanted. 
Um, it wasn't safe for the volunteers to come into our facilities to be sorting food. Um, so everything switched, you know, all these 300 partners had to switch on a dime and start prepacking boxes and setting them out. Um, you know, uh, people making appointments to pick up food. Um, you know, there were a number of federal food box programs that got started. There were huge, massive um, mass food distributions at airports with cars lined up for miles. Uh, fortunately, that didn't last. We, for a long time, we kind of uh, fine-tuned it. But, you know, it was, it was really over a year where we were doing these box distribution programs. And those were, you know, a pre-packed box of fresh food, often um, some kind of cheese, uh, meat, and some fresh produce. And at, at 19 or 20 locations around the state, um, where people could sign up and just drive up and have that box uh, popped in the back seat or in their trunk and drive off um, safely. Those have all winded wind down now. Um, a lot of those were federally funded and supported. Um, and, and we've seen a big increase of people coming to our, our veggie Van Goghs, which again are all over the state, um, and, and have changed to a pre-sorted um, pre, uh, bag of produce and then whatever else we have, dairy, eggs, meat, um, that again gets loaded right into somebody's car as they drive through. And as I don't, you know, some food shelves have gone back to, um, to people visiting, usually with appointments now, I think. Um, you know, the world is not back to whatever normal was before. And, and I think things are gonna always look different um, from here on out. Uh, we're trying to figure out the food bank what has worked well? Uh, what works for people? What do people like as far as getting food in different ways? Uh, and how can we kind of refine and fine tune um, the methods that we're using now? You know, it's, it's more food than ever is going out. Um, and, and we've been able to, to accomplish this. And now we have to figure out how we're going to sustain it. Uh, that's amazing. And one of the uh, statistics, and uh, I was amazed, uh, to read is that of course you, you hear about this with any charity or nonprofit that a lot of the expenses uh, wind up the, for administration. And I think one of your hallmarks is your low administrative expenses, something like 7%. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I know it's tooting your own horn, but I think it's important to talk about. Yeah, you know, first I would say that I think it's, I, I, I'm very proud of the way the Vermont Food Bank operates and that, that we, we make sure that our donor dollars are going to execute our mission, um, which is you know, that everyone in Vermont has enough food to eat every day, um, you know, that people have equitable access to nourishing food and that everyone has, is taking action to end hunger and poverty. Um, I, I don't really like the distinction of, of low admin expenses because those expenses are things that are absolutely necessary for performing nonprofits to, to function well. Um, the food bank, um, because we're so operational, um, you know, we're in coordinating distributions. Um, it means that, that almost all the dollars that come in are going toward that. And because we're a large organization, um, we can get some, we don't have to have as, as many people, you know, per dollar raising the money. Although we have to have people raising the money because when folks make a donation to the food bank, that's feeding our neighbors. We got to make sure that we thank them. Um, and that, uh, that people are aware of the work that's happening because it's that awareness that, that fuels the support. Um, it's also that we get so much uh, donated food and government food, uh, federal government food. Um, it helps keep our expenses down. And so we can, we can create, you know, enough food for, for five meals for every $3 donated. Um, and we're leveraging that with volunteer efforts, like I said, and donated goods and services um, to supplement the great work that our team does. Yes, I noticed that uh, in one of your uh, letters that went out, it's very effective. And it talks about just how much you can get per dollar from, from your, your donors. It, it, it's amazing. And I think you have these little uh, tickets that, uh, holiday food delivery ticket, uh, which I've right. seen. Tell us what this little program is about. 
Right. It's, you know, it's really a way for people to visualize what their donation is going to do. You know, it's a not not everyone can come and, and take a look at one of our distribution centers. And I one of my favorite things to do was give tours uh, prior to COVID. Um, not so much now, but it it's it really is that tangible. It really is that when when you make a donation to the Vermont Food Bank, that that dollar and those dollars go towards things like purchasing food or um, paying the driver and leasing the, the truck because it's actually more effect efficient to lease our trucks than to own them um, uh, and drive those refrigerated trucks around the state to make sure the food is where people are. Um, you know, a warehouse full of food is no good if people can't get to it. Um, and so it, it really is about um, making that point that, um, that each dollar is actually going to feed people um, and that uh, that because of the way we operate and our scale, um, we can be very, very efficient. Um, you know, we buy food by the truckload, literally a 53 foot tractor trailer pulls up to our dock and it's full of canned corn or, or green frozen green beans. And, uh, and then that food is either distributed at no cost or, or um, our, you know, local partners can purchase that through a co-op program you know, at that truckload cost. So, so it really is a more efficient and effective way to get food out there. Although I will say the most effective and dignified way for people to access food if they, they can't always afford it um, is to get the resources to be able to go to this, their local store and do that. And that's the Three Squares Vermont program, federally known as, as SNAP or food stamps. Um, really encourage people if, if they're struggling um, to afford food to go to our website, vtfoodbank.org, or they can go to um, uh, vermontfoodhelp.com and you can learn all about uh, whether you are eligible for Three Squares Vermont. Well, we're still in the, in the pandemic and it's the run up to the end of the year and the holiday season and uh, that doesn't mean things are going to stop. You, your obligations will continue right into the next year. But tell us a little bit how you're navigating this uh, 2021 holiday season. Yeah, um, you know it's it's operationally it's challenging because of COVID still here and because of the you know the the high um, transmissibility in Vermont. So we're being very very careful. Um, it's really important that our team stay healthy. Um, and we've been really fortunate so far in taking the precautions necessary to make sure that our drivers are still out on the road every day. Um, some of the things we've been doing really as a result of COVID, um, we had a surge of support from the state of Vermont um, through passing through some of the, the large amounts of federal dollars that have come through. And it's allowed us to, for instance, buy a lot of food from Vermont farmers and growers. You know, early in COVID, um, some of the markets dried up. So the, the schools weren't buying food anymore. The restaurants were closed. Um, and the food bank was able to step in and, and create markets for some of our local farmers. Um, and we've continued those relationships and got some, some uh, appropriations from the Vermont legislature. Um, so actually this time of year, we're, we're still getting that from the, the local growers, um, warehouses and food distribution centers and getting that that fresh local food out to people for the holiday season. Uh, we just did our turkeys this year, more turkeys than ever. I think it was 6,400 turkeys were distributed um, throughout the state. Um, and just making sure, um, although people, you know, hunger is all year round, but this is a special time in people's lives and food is a really important part of the holiday season. And we just wanna make sure that families can, can maybe not worry that one night and celebrate and have a, a beautiful meal on the table with, with some things that they wouldn't otherwise eat um, and just you know, be thankful for their neighbors. Um, and, and I wanna thank you know, the folks who reach out for help too, um, because it takes a lot of courage to do that. Um, it takes a lot of courage to say, wow, I, I, don't, I don't think I can afford enough food this month. I'm gonna, go to a veggie van go, or I'm gonna stop in at my local food shelf. Um, but 
that is also um, what keeps our communities vibrant mm -hmm. and keeps folks ready um, to, to bounce back from setbacks. Right. Well, we want to uh, give people an opportunity to get more information. You have a, a very good website, which you described, but what do you need right now? How can people help uh, physically, financially, or maybe information-wise? Well, give us a little list of uh, uh, maybe first-time viewers or people who haven't even heard of the uh, Vermont Food Bank. What do you need and how people can help? Sure. Of course, as you, as you pointed out, Dennis, you know, dollars are stretched farther by the Vermont Food Bank. And so financial contributions, and it really is, you know, we're, we're like I said, we've gotten some more federal funding, but, you know, through the state, you know, prior to COVID, we got about 1% of our operating budget through state grants. Um, it's gone up to about four to five percent, but you know, 95% of that of, of how we do our work comes from from donations. And people can learn, you know, how to donate at vtfoodbank.org, which is our website. And people can also, more importantly, find out how to access um, food resources and all the the different programs that are available, you know, whether you're um, whether you're over 60 um, and can get uh, access to certain programs, or you're uh, a, a young mom and maybe you can get access to WIC. You know, all that information is there, um, and we have people that can help navigate those programs also. So there are um, text numbers and phone numbers that folks can call. In fact, I'll give you a phone number at the end, um, but also. Um, I want to encourage people to donate and volunteer um, at their local organizations. So, you know, whether it's Feeding Chittenden, the South Burlington Food Shelf, uh, in Bethel, in Canaan, wherever you are around the state, um, you can actually go to our website and use the Food Bank Finder or the Network Partner Finder and find a local organization um, often needs volunteer help. Uh, the food bank uses volunteers, and you can fill out a volunteer application right on our website also. Um, and then I also want to encourage people to talk about um, food insecurity and hunger as an issue in Vermont, particularly to your elected representatives, to your um, state senators and, and state representatives, and your even your local select boards. Um, it, it doesn't surprise me anymore, but it surprises some folks that a lot of people don't really realize that hunger is an issue in our own neighborhoods, in our own communities, um, and that there's something you can do about it. That's great. So we, we do physical labor and, and send a letter. Um, you know, That's the right. legislature will be back in session in January, and so will the House and U.S. Senate. So it uh, might be an appropriate time at the holiday season to, to write something about. Absolutely. And it makes a big difference. You know, we will be before the legislature again um, with this extended um, heightened need. It's going to go at least through the next year. We will be in the legislature again um, asking for more of that pass through federal support. And so a letter to a local legislator makes a big difference. That's great. Well, I want to thank you, John, for all you're doing. And, and thank you for uh, being with us uh, today on Positively Vermont. And uh, uh, please keep in touch and uh, maybe we'll get a, a progress report in a little while and hopefully things will improve. But uh, thank you so much for all you do and all your volunteers and supporters. Thank you. I appreciate the, the chance to talk to you, Dennis, and talk to your viewers. And, uh, and yeah, we're going to make sure that things get better. Let's That's keep great. working on that. That's great. Well, thank you, John. And uh, this is Dennis McMahon. Uh, my guest today has been John Sales the CEO of the Vermont Food Bank. Thank you for watching.